Say you've got a great guest lined up for your podcast. They've said yes. They've agreed to be on your show. Now what? On this episode of Podcastification, we're going into part two of my series on getting influencers to be on your show and how you can handle it in the very best way. My name is Carrie Green, and I am the Client Happiness Guy at PodcastFastTrack.com, and this is Podcastification. This show is all about podcasting, how to do it, how not to do it, best practices, interesting news items that have to do with the realm of podcasting, and who knows what else. And I'm trying to do it all with a little bit of fun and some information to help you get a show going, keep yours going, or make it better. And if you like what's going on here on the show, I would appreciate it, oh, so appreciate it, if you could leave a rating or review on iTunes. You can find out how to do that at podcastfasttrack.com slash review. That's enough of that kind of stuff. Let's get you podcastificated right away. Welcome to part two of this series of podcast episodes talking about getting influencers, those perfect guests for your particular niche, to be a guest on your podcast. In the last episode, episode 59, which you can find at podcastfasttrack.com slash 59, I talked about how to reach out to those guests, the best ways to approach it, the mindset you need to have. So if you haven't heard that part one episode, please go back and listen to that one now. The links will be in the show notes for this episode, which is podcastfasttrack.com slash 60, or it's right there on your listening app. You can slide to the description and find the link there. But getting on into this second episode, we are going to be talking about what you do once that person has actually said yes. I mean, what do you do to make it easy for them? What do you do to get them rolling toward a confirmed solid appointment where the two of you are going to have a great conversation. That's what we're going to talk about on this episode. So let's stop talking and start getting into it. Now, what I am going to recommend to you as the very first thing you get set up in order to make it easy for a guest who has said yes to give you all the information that you need for your podcast is not the only way to do it. You need to understand that right off. But these are best practices, things that I've seen my clients do, I've seen other people do that make a lot of sense to me and I think are very beneficial for both your guest and for you. So the first step that I would recommend is that you figure out some sort of system that enables you to get the information that you need in order to both have a great interview and promote the episode well. And that's going to include a whole lot of things. The way that I typically recommend that you do this is to set up some sort of form that your guests can easily complete or fill out that gives you the information that you need. One of the easiest ways to do that is with Google Forms. It's an absolutely free platform. It's part of the Google Drive interface. And if you have a Gmail account, you already have access to Google Forms and probably don't even know it. So all you have to do is Google Google Forms and you'll find the way to use Google Forms. Now, you can set these forms up with a number of different types of questions. You can set them up to embed on your website. There are all kinds of things you can do, including embed videos to give instructions, uh, embed images to give examples, all kinds of great things. Some of the... Some of the Description areas will also create live links when you type in a link. So you can provide all kinds of resources for your guests right there on that one page that will enable them to give you the information that you need. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. You could either just create the Google form and then as you send an email to your guest that you've already spoken with and who's agreed to be on your show, you could just include a link to that form right there in the email. They could click on the link, go to the form, and begin filling out the information that you need. Or 
you could embed that form on your website somewhere and provide your guest with a link to that page on your website. Now, why would you do one over the other? Well, there's only one reason I can think of, and you may have some comments about this. So wherever you are seeing this episode, I would appreciate your comments to tell me what you see. But the way that I see it is I'm probably going to send them to my website page because because I want my guest to become familiar with me and my website and my brand. I want them to see a little bit of what they're going to be experiencing, perhaps when they come on my show. And as they see my logo, they see my website, they see the kinds of episodes I've done before, they're going to get a feeling for what it's going to be like for them to be on my podcast. And I think that's beneficial to them. So I'm going to embed the form on my website and they'll come to my website and they'll fill it out. Now, if you're going to create a Google form, which obviously is not the only way that you could go about this. I mean, if you want to, you could just send them an email asking all the questions that you have and have them respond to that email. You may think that's simpler. You may think it's easier. I personally don't because the Google form will connect to an online set of responses that are in the same place all the time. And you can go back there and refer to it as you need to, rather than going through your email and trying to hunt down a guest's responses. But regardless, once you've got this form or this email ready and you want to send it to your guest, what are the kinds of things you need to ask them? That's the next step. Let's move on to it right now. Okay, in this section, I'm just going to give you a list of things that you may want to ask for from your guest, and I'm going to give you my reasons why I think they might be important. Now, of course, you are going to filter all this through what you think is important and what you think is beneficial for both your podcast and the audience that you're serving. So keep that in mind as we go through this. The first thing I would recommend you ask for is a bio of your guest. Most guests who are trying to build a brand on the internet are going to have or should have some kind of bio about themselves that gives you the basic facts about who they are, what their education and background is, what they've accomplished, that kind of thing. Now, I'm not saying you have to use the bio word for word the way they provide it, unless, of course, they ask you to do so. And in that case, you may want to negotiate with with them about that or whatever. But you, you can use that bio typically. In the way that you see fit, take facts from it, not use the entire thing, reword it to fit your style on your website, that kind of thing. Because part of what you're doing in podcasting, this is just kind of a side note, is that you are, so to speak, being yourself. You are building your personal brand. And so when I read a page where there's just a bio that is clearly not in the voice or the style of the podcaster, I recognize they've just copy and pasted this, which... I guess, isn't a detrimental thing, but you know, I want everything on my website to sound like me. I want it to be in my brand, in my tone, in my voice, so that I am making the people who are following my podcast more familiar with me. And that builds the know, like, and trust factor. Wow. I didn't really intend to say that, but there's a bonus for you. Not going to charge you extra for that one. And so that's the bio, something that would be helpful for you possibly to read on air for your podcast or reword in your own style or include on your show notes page or in the description on the listening app from Libsyn or wherever you place your description for your feed. So that is the first thing I would suggest. I would Next, I would suggest a headshot, you know, a professional, good quality headshot. Now, a lot of people don't have a professional one. I get that. I haven't had one until recently. So You may not want to be quite as picky about that, but you want a headshot. Now, here's a limitation on the Google Forms side of things. Google Forms presently does not have a way for someone to upload something and provide it to you. Okay, so if you're going to use a Google Form, you may want to just put a little instruction or a video that tells them an email address that they can email a headshot to or to save it to Google Drive or Dropbox and share the link with you. You know, that kind of thing. Now, why would you want a headshot? Well, obviously, on a podcast, a image is going to be hard for people to listen to, right? But you are able to use it in things like cover art for that episode. If you do episode-specific cover art, you're able to use it in your show notes description that goes on the app or on your website. You're also able to use it in promotions, 
And you should be promoting these episodes both after their publication and possibly even before so that you can generate buzz about the episode. Your following could be paying attention and listening for that episode because they know it's coming. You've shared it well with a headshot or a bio about your guests. The next things, plural, that I would suggest you ask your guests to share with you is their social media information. And you ask for whatever it is that you want, the places that you most use to promote and distribute your episodes. So that could be Facebook, that could be a Twitter profile, that could be a LinkedIn profile, Google+, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is that you want in terms of their social media profiles, ask for it. Now, why would you ask for these? Well, number one, it's going to make it easier for you to promote your episodes with that particular guest if you have this information because you can tag them in your post and then they will be notified that they were tagged in a post. They can check it out and then they have the opportunity to share it as well. So you're expanding the reach of your episode, not just to your own audience or people who happen to see it on social media, but also directly to their audiences if they take the time to share that episode. And I would suggest that in this section where you ask for these social media profile links, you also include maybe a little video there on your Google form or something like that, that explains to them that by sharing this with you, you'll be able to tag them and then ask them ever so sweetly if they would share the episode as well, because it's going to only benefit them to get this conversation out in front of their own audience. It's going to enable their audience to then be aware of it, to benefit from it, and to possibly share it as well. So that's why you would need the social media profiles. And this next one may sound really obvious, but you want to get their website. The reason I usually ask them to provide me their website is because they are usually very careful and practiced at spelling it correctly. I don't want to misunderstand or mishear and grab the wrong website link. So I'm going to have them provide me their website property. And I'm also going to ask them to provide me with only one website property. The reason for that is because if you didn't hear episode 59, which I would recommend you go back and listen to at podcast fast track dot com slash five nine is because you're going to ask them, you're going to offer to them to offer some great, wonderful, valuable thing to your audience. And you want the website they share to relate to that one thing. So ask them, maybe you'll want to include a video right here on your Google form to explain to them that related to the thing that they are going to be offering your audience the best piece of content, the best value that they think they can provide to your specific niche. You want to be able to highlight that website as well. And so you ask them for that particular website. It seems like a no brainer. seems like something you would naturally do. A lot of podcasters ask their guests, you know, at the end of the episode, where can I find you? And they'll give their website address. But what I recommend, what I usually do so that you can kind of control the flow of your episode a little better is you share that information. You've asked your guest for it. You have it. Go ahead and share it yourself so that you don't get a guest that just rambles on and on. And again, I guess that's another little bonus tip that I'm not going to charge you for. And I guess an aspect of this one is if they are offering a special promo or gift or something like that for your audience, include or ask for the exact link to that particular landing page on their website, their lead pages site, whatever. You want to be able to make it easy for your audience, your listeners to go and find that resource. So you can include that on your show notes. You can announce it on the podcast audio. You could even include it in your description so that if they're using a listening app, they can slide right, left, up, down, however they find their notes and find the link right there. And the final thing in this section that I would suggest you ask your podcast guests for is a last minute contact phone number, either voice or text, so that if you have something come up, an emergency situation, your technology is not working, your internet goes down, whatever, you're able to contact them easily and quickly and arrange some other thing because there's nothing more embarrassing than your internet to go down and you can't get a hold of your guest. They're going to get a bad opinion of you, think you stood them up, whatever. You want to make it simple. So just explain. 
in case of technology issues, in case of last minute emergencies, I need a way to contact you to let you know I won't be able to do the interview. Can you please provide me with a phone number? Won't be shared with anyone, blah, blah, blah. Won't contact you about anything besides this particular interview, blah, blah, blah. Make them feel at ease, but get that phone number or that contact way to let them know in case you are unable to do the interview. Now, I would also suggest that you provide your phone number for them in case something comes up on their side so that they can contact you right away and let you know the very same thing. And now that we've gotten through all the things that you need to ask your guests to provide you, there are also some things you need to provide to your guests, and it's mainly in the form of instructions, things they need to know in order to make your interview come off well, okay? So I'm going to give you a handful of things here that will be helpful, and some of this is going to depend on what method you're using to connect with your guests through, whether that's Skype, Zencaster, Ringer, Zoom, you know, however you're doing this. And so keep that in mind as you hear these things. Now, first of all, you're going to need to give instructions if you're using Skype that are specific to Skype. For example, you're going to need to give them your username and instruct them that you'll be sending them a contact request. You'll need to also ask for their username so that you can send that contact request. You need to give them some guidelines on what to do to make the Skype session work best. And this would apply also for things like Zencaster and Ringer, also Zoom, such as turning off background programs like Dropbox and Google Drive and email, turning off all noisemakers, you know, things like that. So you want to make sure that you're giving instructions for how you're going to connect. Okay, I've mentioned Skype. There's also Google Hangouts. If that's the case, you'll need a Gmail address for them to send them an invite. If they don't have a Gmail address, you can still do it with a non-Gmail address, but it's easier if you have a Gmail address. You also have options like Zencaster and Ringer. And I would suggest if you're going to use one of those platforms, because they're not quite as familiar as others, that you use some kind of tutorial video that quickly shows how to use the platform. Now, I am going to include in the resources for this episode, which you can find at podcastfasttrack.com slash six zero, two videos that I've created, one about Zencaster, one about Ringer, that walk you step by step through how to use those platforms. Now, the Zencaster video I know is a little bit dated because Josh has done a great job of updating Zencaster over the last few months. So... Keep that in mind as you watch the video, but both of these videos are ones you can either embed in that Google form or you can send a link to and use to help your guests make it easier for connecting with you in those ways. So in both of those cases, it's really simple. They don't have to download anything. In most cases, you can just send them a link and they can connect with you that way. So all this to say, you want to provide instructions to them for how you're going to connect. And some people will use a free conference calling service, which I never recommend. The call quality is awful. It's like, you know, talking into a tin can and expecting to have good audio. It's just ridiculous. So I never recommend. I actually always recommend either Zencaster or Ringer. And I do have an affiliate relationship with Ringer. If you want to get Ringer and use my affiliate code, it will be in the show notes for this episode, podcastfasttrack.com slash six zero. Man, I was running out of breath there. Sorry. Uh, and I would appreciate if you use that. You'll see it there on the website page under the resources listed. All right. We talked about instructions for how you're going to connect. Let's talk about instructions for what makes for a good recording. Okay, this next section is perhaps a resource, a PDF download, a web page that you'd want to provide to your guests. I recommend the PDF download because then they can download it and keep it for themselves. They don't have to go back and find your web page in order to know these details. They can easily reference it because they've kept the sheet. But this sheet is going to include a lot of best practices, things that you can help them know how to do that will make for a better recording, a better conversation. So 
first of all, I would couch this whole resources sheet with an emphasis to promoting them in the best possible light. You want them to see that this interview, this conversation could be of great value to them. And so you want to portray them in the best possible light. And so that's the spirit in which you're giving them suggestions for how they can help you make this the very best interview possible. Okay. The first thing I would say is that somewhere toward the beginning of that sheet, you will say something to this effect. Once we get onto the line, whether it's Incaster or Ringer or Skype, I will go over these instructions with you again briefly so that you will remember and we will ensure that we have the very best recording. How do you like that? That's my best impression of a scientific geeky guy. And if you're a scientific geeky guy, hey, no offense intended, just having a little bit of fun here. (laughs) And if you tell them you're going to do that at the beginning of your conversation, make sure that you do tell them these things again at the beginning of the conversation. And it's to your benefit to do so because you're simply going to be double checking that everything needed to make the podcast recording the very best quality it can be is actually been taken care of. So here is the list of things I would say you provide on this best practices sheet. You may want to get out a pencil or paper and write these down or look in the show notes and I may or may not have a bullet point list of these for you on the podcast show notes page. Okay, the first thing you should tell your podcast guest is that you'll get a much better recording if they will choose a quiet setting in which the melodious tones of their voice can be heard clearly and without distraction from surrounding background noises and interference. Part of that is having a location that has a naturally low echo in the room. Low echo, not like you just heard, a low echo. We've all heard those recordings where someone on the line or on the, on the conversation does not have a noisy background. They just have this thing that's called room noise. It's just this big sound where their voice is kind of bouncing around the room. Now, some criteria you could give your guests that would help them choose a place that has a low room echo is a place without hard surface floors, you know, so it has a rug or a carpet, a place that has very little glass in the room. So like a conference room with a big window, you don't want that. You want something that has soft furniture, curtains on the windows, you know, anything that can absorb sound will help to have a context or an environment that has a low echo. So that's just one thing. And Be careful on this. You don't want to belabor this with your guests and make them feel like they have to have the perfect setting, but you do want to give them a tip to help them have a quiet setting that has minimal room noise. Okay, another thing I would recommend is that you encourage them to sit still during your conversation. You may think this is kind of a given, but it's not. As a guy who runs a podcast editing service, I can tell you, man, we hear all kinds of things going on with the guest who's being interviewed, like tapping their desk, tapping their microphone, shifting in their seat, just rustling papers, all kinds of nasty, ugly sounds that make for a recording or a conversation that is not very enjoyable. And so giving your guests some tips about those kinds of things will help them to be mindful of it, especially when you re-emphasize it right at the beginning of your conversation. Because again, You want to promote them in the very best possible light, and you need to emphasize that as much as you can. You know, a funny story I just heard recently on a show called My Worst Interview Ever, Uh, Tim from Ringer does the show. I'll put a link to the show in the episode notes for this episode at podcastfasttrack.com slash six zero. And he interviewed someone who once did an interview with somebody who was on a treadmill For goodness sake, what are you thinking? You're in big trouble, buster. Moving right along to another thing you may want to make your guests aware of is the type of computer connection they're using. You want them to be on a hardwired connection, if at all possible. So their computer that they are speaking into recording on should be plugged into an actual router through an Ethernet cable of some sort. Now, you can do this with them being on Wi-Fi. But the chances of your signal being disrupted or skippy or things like that are going to be higher if they're on Wi-Fi. 
So just mention it so they know that if it's possible and they can do that, that would be a great thing. And by the way, you should be doing the same thing too. Don't use Wi-Fi. Use a hardwired connection. The next thing I would suggest that you put on this best practices sheet or web page that you're going to provide for your guests is that they use some sort of external microphone, an external microphone. So that means not the microphone that is built into their computer. This is going to give you that big echoey sounding room sound that I mentioned before, because the microphones in laptops and PCs are notoriously bad. You want to stress to them that they should use some sort of external microphone. And I'm going to run through a real quick bullet point list of the types of microphones I would suggest in order of preference. So first of all, if they have a USB microphone of any kind, an AT2100, an AT2005, I believe Rode has some USB microphones. I believe that Blue has some USB microphones. You want to suggest that they have a USB microphone to use. If they don't have one, no big deal. Here's what I would suggest next. A USB headset. Okay, they may have a headset laying around that someone uses for customer service or that kind of thing. And if it can plug right into their computer and they can use that for the conversation, that would be better. Now, one word of caution on this, you want to make sure that that headset microphone is angled away from their face, not right in front of their mouth, because you'll get these heavy breathing sounds. I had an episode I had to edit one time where the woman obviously had on a headset mic and you could pick up every single bit of her breathing even when she wasn't speaking so it was like you know you had darth vader in your earbuds the whole time you were listening to the episode it was very irritating and quite unenjoyable so whatever you are able to do to help your guest not be that person is suggested another best practice that you want to make sure your guest understands is that they must, they must, they must wear headphones while you're doing your conversation. Now, here's the reason for that. If they are listening to you ask your questions and make your comments through their computer speakers rather than through headphones, then that noise from their speakers of your voice is going to come into their microphone, whichever microphone they're using, and it's going to create this echoey delay kind of a thing sounds like you know a robot voice sometimes and it's going to be very distracting and sometimes even uncomfortable to people who have on earbuds or things like that so you want to explain that and make sure they understand and these don't have to be fancy headphones earbuds are fine just make sure for goodness sake that they wear headphones now one word of caution on this one if they wear headphones which they should be you want to make sure they understand to have the volume turned fairly low, not so low it's hard for them to hear, but fairly low. Because if they have it cranked up really high and they're anywhere near their microphone, which they should be, they are going to have the same problem with that loud, muffled kind of a voice of you coming through their microphone. And you're going to get the same effect. So I'm going to leave it up to you how to explain that simply and make it clear to your guest. But again, it's one of those things you want to help them do to make the very best recording. Now, related to that, I guess, is that they should also mute or turn off their external speakers from their computer. Most of the time, when you plug in headphones, that's going to happen. But you just want to make sure that there's no sound coming out of their speakers at all. And then finally, one last thing I would suggest that you go over with your guest, both in this best practices sheet and in your pre-recording conversation is that they are not too close to their microphone. You see, when someone is too close to their microphone, it can produce this effect that many of us know of as clipping, where the audio gets louder and it's way loud. I mean, it's so loud that sometimes it even hurts your ears. I mean, like right now, I have my mouth right against my microphone and it's probably not the most pleasant thing for you right now. And I apologize for that. I don't mean to prolong your suffering, but I'm trying to make the point that you don't want to guess who's doing this. So you want to make sure that they're probably six to eight inches, something like this, away from their microphone so that you don't get that kind of an issue because it's just not fun for anybody. And it puts them in a negative light. So you want to, again, 
emphasize you want to promote them in the best light possible. Hello? Those are the things I suggest you do to help your guest prepare for the very best recording with you possible. I am including all the links to the resources I've mentioned in the show notes for this episode. And let me just say that all of these things can be included either on that Google form that I suggested you use as a download link or something like that, or you can include it in the initial email that you send them that is instructing them how to get started with preparation for your interview. Now, keep in mind, as you send this to your all-star guest, If they are truly an all-star, they're probably going to have an assistant or someone take care of these things for them. I don't care who does it. I just care that someone does it because you need these things in order to promote them in the very best light. And you want to make sure I've said that a bazillion times in this episode. Okay. Well, not a bazillion, but a lot because it's so important. You've got to help them understand that this is a benefit to them and the better they can help you make it the better they are going to come across to your niche audience that they perhaps haven't even had exposure to yet. So it doesn't matter who fills out the form. doesn't matter who sends you the stuff. None of that matters. What matters is that they have the information they need to make their conversation with you an excellent episode. And it's your responsibility to ensure that they have that information. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Podcastification. I would love to hear your feedback your best practices, your comments about this episode. So feel free to leave me comments wherever you see this on social media or send me an email, Kerry, C-A-R-E-Y at podcastfasttrack.com. And if you could do me one quick and very simple favor, think of one person you know who is a podcaster and could benefit from the information I've shared on this episode and using that handy dandy smartphone app that you're listening to this podcast on right now, find the sharing function and share this episode with them with a personal comment from you that explains why you think they would benefit from hearing this episode of Podcastification. All right, you know what time it is. It's time for you to go out and make it a podcastificating day. This show is brought to you by Podcast Fast Track where my team provides professional podcasting services without the time suck. Full production, editing, and show notes, all in one monthly subscription package. You can find out more at podcastfasttrack.com. Now go out and make it a podcastificating day. Audio editing and show notes by podcastfasttrack.com. Get 15% off your first month by mentioning this show.